Hello everybody, I'm George from Ireland. So, happy Christmas, it's been Christmas Day, and uh, what an unusual place to welcome you at Christmas time. So I'm here in Sahara, um, Egypt. Uh, it's not Sahara Desert, although it kind of is in the desert, um, but uh, Saqqara, I hear people sometimes say it, but I think there's a, a glottal stop there. So anyway, this is an extraordinarily important um, uh, archeological site in Egypt probably the second most important Acropolis after the, the Great Pyramids at Giza, which are only um, a few miles to the north. Uh, so for about 3,000 years, this is a burial site of very high status people. So it has extraordinary um, historical uh, significance. So it has its name from Sokar, who is this um, deity who was patron of, of the site. And we're just a few miles from the Nile Valley. If you look back that way, you see the greenery beyond, okay? So we're out into the desert. Um, we're only about 15 miles from the river itself. So um, their tombs are dating from as far back as the first dynasty, right? That's 3100 BC. Just think it was over 3000 years old before the birth of Jesus, whose, whose, whose birth we celebrate today. Um, so there are a number of different um, architectural styles in which these things are built, mostly by mud brick. Um, and they're, they're used to tree trunks as well, palm trees being the ones around here. We're gonna see step pyramid of Djoser, um, he's from the third dynasty and so on. So uh, the, the sixth dynasty was building here. Um, the, a, a tomb was built here for Tutankhamun that doesn't lie in it. Remember, he was interred in the Valley of Kings um, in the greatest of secrecy. So his tomb wasn't discovered until 1922 when Howard Carter happened upon it. Tutankhamun's wet nurse is, is buried here. This woman who was, well, so this man is effectively his, his finance minister was also laid to rest here and on and on and on. And going on to the Christian era, the Coptic Christians, they built various, um, they built various uh, sites here as well. The monastery quite close by. <clears throat> There were temples dedicated to various deities of the ancient Egyptian pantheon, Anubis, who was a god with, a, with the head of a jackal, uh, because they took all these psychotropic substances, which is why the imagery um, on, they painted on the walls of tombs is so trippy. Um, and then uh, Horus, who's like a man with a, got the, the head of a falcon and so on. Um, Thoth, who's a man with the head of an ibis, ibis. Um, so it's, it's um, like, a, like some sort of deer, really, with the horns. Um, and baboon, and on and on and on. So it goes right on to the 27th dynasty. So it's quite extraordinary. This is the remains of a temple right here. So, <coughs> um, and look at the, the, the festive donkey, right? That little quadruped is decorated with some tinsel around his neck. Anyway, it's just idyllic weather. So if you come here, you know, I, I recommend you get a taxi all the way from Cairo, go find an organized tour. I came, you know, going on local buses, I take two local buses and a tuk-tuk. And okay, I saved a bit of money, but it took two hours rather than one hour, me and my pigeon Arabic trying to get by. Um, so it's just paid <coughs> 100 um, guinea or Egyptian pounds to come here. <coughs> it's kind of ideal weather, despite the sneezing. You can see how people are dressed and it, it's quite sunny but you know in central Cairo because it's so polluted then then there's always a haze and the sun doesn't get really through to you it's not terribly good for your skin and um, if you've got respiratory conditions don't spend too long in Cairo for, for, so there's the step pyramid there's also the bent pyramid uh, and so on so these are these are the earliest prototypes I'm gonna show you some imagery of them here much of the walls are gone if you come into the gate, they'll try and persuade you to take a, a taxi and I'd have to pay even an entrance fee for the taxi as well, paying the taxi driver. But there's no need, you can walk over the sand. I did it quite easily. By coming where that um, thing is there, where that covering is there, just walking straight that way to the gate rather than curving around with the road. So um, anyway, what else to tell you about this um, extraordinary site? Um, <coughs> so uh, it was Neti uh, Jerchet was the pharaoh who built it. He's sort of commonly known as Joseph. So this is um, his mausoleum, I suppose. Um, and uh, it was uh, obviously built in stone. And this showed that how they really developed their funerary rites. And it's sort of a prototype of the pyramids. It's not the classic pyramidal shape, which is obviously much more difficult to build. So um, uh, anyway, uh, there's a stone wall, which is 280 uh, meters around. Um, there was a, there was a courtyard. I'm going to go in there in a second. I mean, I'm not sure I'm allowed to film it there. You had to pay extra to film it at various places. So it was only excavated by by um, a um, German uh, archaeologist in 1821, Heinrich von Minotoli. Um And then the French did a lot of work on it in the 1920s and 30s under Jean von Philippe Lauer, who worked for the Egyptian part, Department of the Antiquities. Um, so so there are several other sites here which are still not um, open right now. Um, 
so that if they're not listed on the um, entrance fee thing, then you can't come in. There are about 148 pyramids in Egypt, some are quite small and unimpressive in a very poor state. And don't try climbing up those three years in prison if you do that. There was a German chap who did it and got away with it some time ago, but I wouldn't recommend it because though having realized that leniency um, is no deterrent, I don't think they will <coughs> let people off again. So buried here on the west bank of the River Nile, the sun goes down, that's death. And then you follow the sun, <coughs> your journey into the under underworld for eventual resurrection. So it'll show what endeavors people will make in order to try and um, defeat mortality. But I don't think anyone manages to escape the ultimate statistics. You might, you might think that the Egyptian suspicions would be aroused when they've been doing this for 3,000 years and none of their pharaohs had come back from the hereafter. Uh, so yeah, open 365, uh, it closes five o'clock in the evening. In the summer you wanna go when it's really, um, when it's really early because before it gets too hot, I would look at the plane banking away there, you know, because people rise with the dawn, rise with the lark for prayer, um, and then the, the first spot of sunlight on the, on the horizon. And then if you have a light breakfast and come straight here an hour from central Cairo and do your things and be heading back by noon when it gets scorching hot. So you can go around with a guide, you can go without, uh, without a guide. Good to read about it a lot before you come here because there's not a great deal of information. Um, so uh, we're on the, we're on the um, Giza side and we're west of the Nile. Really everything west of the Nile is Giza governate, if not um, the city of, of uh, Giza. So then obviously Christianity came here just after Jesus Christ. The country is entirely Christian and they spoke the Coptic language. That's why the, the, the country gets its name Egypt. You think of it as Egypt from Copt. Um, and there's still the Coptic language, which is just a hieratic language used in, in Christian liturgy in the Egyptian Coptic church. Uh, but that eventually fell away. In the 7th century, the Arabians came and they brought uh, Islam. So Muslims became the majority. But as recently as the 19th century, Christians started to 25% of the population. They thought, thought to be now more like 12% of the population, tend to have fewer children, and more of them, more of them have um, moved abroad. So and they've been working on these for decades and um, thousands of laborers, perhaps even tens of thousands. It's debatable just how badly they were treated. I mean, the Great Pyramids in Giza, they found the workers' village and said, actually, they seem to be reasonably well fed, like 300 grams of meat a day, which doesn't sound a lot, but that's what we should be getting. We should eat more, eat more and more like twice a week, not twice a day, just to keep their muscles up. And they weren't necessarily very unwilling to be here. And certain times of year, because the inundation of the Nile Valley, there was no farm work they could do, and it kept them occupied, and perhaps it gave them a sense of national pride. They were imbued with that sense of accomplishment, because these were just some um, uh, world-beating projects, really. And that great pyramid of Giza, um, what's his name, um, Diodorus Siculus, he's the first one to coin the terms of seven wonders of the world. Um, and he listed that's the only seven wonder of the world still standing. And obviously it's, it's, it strikes a wonder to people uh, even today. There's one here that's not quite so, um, so, so, so all-striking, the pyramid of um, Djoser. Um, and Imhotep is also buried here, various other very high-status people, aristocrats, viziers, and so on. Okay, toodaloo.